Well, let's get started. Our top story now and on Buddh Purnima today. Prime Minister Modi is embarking on a new mission to strengthen ties with Nepal from Lord Buddha's birthplace, Lumbini. He is on a day-long visit when he'll hold a bilateral meeting with his Nepalese counterpart. Modi will also attend a ceremony to lay the foundation stone for a centre for Buddhist culture and heritage. This will be the Prime Minister's fifth visit to Nepal since assuming power in 2014 and the first by the Indian Prime Minister to Lumbini, Gargi. That's right. NDTV's Ratnadeep sent us this report from Lumbini. On the auspicious occasion of Buddha Purnima, Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi will be here in Lumbini in Nepal. We are coming to you from Lumbini from outside the uh, UNESCO World Heritage Site, the monastic zone of Lumini. You can see massive security arrangement has been made here for the visit of the Indian Prime Minister. His fifth visit to Nepal ever since he became Prime Minister in 2014. But his first visit to Lumini and that too on this auspicious day of Buddha Purnima where he would be here at the birthplace of Lord Buddha. He would be flying from Kushinagar in uh, Uttar Pradesh now. Uh, this route is in itself very interesting given the fact that while Lord Buddha was born here in Lumini, it is believed that he attained Nirvana in Kushinagar in Uttar Pradesh and therefore these two locations are very important as far as the Buddhist tourism circuit is concerned and that is what India through this visit of Prime Minister Modi is trying to uh, you know, focus upon trying to boost the in Indo-Nepal relationship through uh, you know, the Buddhist tourism circuit. Uh, in fact, uh, trying to also uh, you know, create uh, an international circuit for Buddhist tourism. Here in Lumini, after reaching here, Prime Minister Narendra Modi will first go uh, to the uh, famous Maya Devi temple where he will offer prayer and then he would also join the Buddha Jayanti celebrations. He is going to address the, pil the pilgrims who have gathered here for the Buddha Jayanti celebrations. He is also going to lay the foundation stone of a cultural and heritage center for Buddhism that is going to build be built uh, there ahead uh, in the monastic zone uh, with the help of the Indian government and after that very important meeting would take place the bilateral meetings between India and Nepal between the two Prime Minister Prime Minister Modi and his Nepalese counterpart Prime Minister Sher Bahadur Deoba who was in India only last month remember after taking charge in Kathmandu the first foreign visit of the Nepal Prime Minister has been to India just goes to show that how even Nepal is trying to further strengthen the relationships between the two countries. Remember ever since Prime Minister Modi had uh, come to power, there have been ups and downs in the Indo-Nepal relationship, particularly there have been some controversy when the previous a regime was in power in Nepal when uh, KP Sharma Oli was the Prime Minister. But now with this regime there has been an attempt from Nepalese side as well to engage with India more and India is also taking this opportunity while both sides are tight lipped in terms of the agendas for the bilateral. However, uh, government sources are telling us that there would be at least uh, several MOUs signed and Nepal would urge India to invest more, to engage more in the energy sector so lot uh, going to happen today but what is more Im most important is that all this is happening on a very auspicious day of Bhut Purnima here in Lumini in Lumini with camera person Sanjay Chakravarti Ratnadeep Chaudhary for NDTV all right, Ratnadeep in Lumbini there, and there you can see the Prime Minister uh, leaving for Kushinagar. It's from Kushinagar where he will then fly uh, to Lumbini, as uh, as uh, Ratnadeep was telling us, very significant that he flying that he's cho choosing to fly from Kushinagar to Lumbini, as uh, Kushinagar is where uh, uh, where uh, Buddha attained Nirvana, and Lumbini is where he was born.
All right, the other uh, big story uh, at the culmination of the Congress is three-day Chintan Shiver in Udaipur. Sonia Gandhi announced the Bharat Jodo Yatra on October 2nd. Well, Rahul Gandhi called for a revival of the party, saying they had lost the connection with the people. Several organizational reforms were announced, but no major overhaul. The Congress party ka connection janta se tuta hai. Usko hume accept karna padega. Us connection ko hume phir se banana padega. Go back and connect with the people. The Congress's message was clear to all its members after the party's three-day brainstorming session in Udaipur. And the old and the young will have to make an effort, as Sonia Gandhi pointed out, on a lighter note, talking about a Bharat Jodo Yatra, the Congress's plans to launch across the country from Gandhi Jayanti. All of us, young and old, young and old, will participate in it. Seniors will have to find ways to accommodate seniors like me. <laughs> in this on how to uh, easily participate in the yatra without having to run out of breath and god knows what else Bharat. rahul gandhi attacked the bjp rss saying he was not afraid and was not corrupt and this fight had to be fought at the national level jo rss aur bjp ki vichardhara hai jo desh ke samne ek khatra hai meri ladai us vichardhara se hai sadak pe utrenge और बीजेपी आरएसएस की विचारधारा से जैसे कांग्रेसी लड़ते हैं पूरा दम लगा के हम लड़ेंगे बट एज द पार्टी गॉट डाउन टू ब्रास टैक्स सम की ऑर्गेनाइजेशनल रिफॉर्म्स वो अडॉप्टेड वन फैमिली वन टिकट विद अ काविया दैट इफ अनदर फैमिली मेंबर वांट्स अ टिकट दे शुड हैव वर्क्ड इन द पार्टी फॉर 5 इयर्स 50% पोस्ट फॉर बिलो 50 अ पॉलिटिकल अफेयर्स कमेटी इन ईच स्टेट यूनिट ऑफ द पार्टी However there was no indication of Rahul Gandhi taking over as Congress president later this year Rahul Gandhi continues to still be calling the shots despite quitting as party president one person per family should get a ticket I know Venu Gopal has made a caveat to that but I do think that it is very important that we limit the number of family members that are involved in our organization But the demand for a parliamentary affairs board as demanded by some of the dissidents was not accepted by the CWC. Instead Sonia Gandhi announced a political affairs committee which would be far less powerful than such a board and the CWC. A compact task force will be set up to drive the process of internal reforms that are essential and that have been discussed in different groups here at Udaipur. These reforms will focus on the 2024 Lok Sabha polls. So I'd like to And in an outreach to key vote banks the Congress announced a social insight committee which will take regular feedbacks from the public a demand for a law to guarantee MSP and demanded the government make the data of caste based census public Reconnecting with the people we will overcome unite India with the broad teams at the Congress's brainstorming session The Congress is attempting to make a makeover and reconnecting and ensuring better representation but the crucial question of who will be the Congress president there is no indication from Rahul Gandhi in Udaipur with Harsha Kumari Singh and camera person Mursulan Sunit Prabhu NDTV And now the latest on the Tamil Nadu quarry accident the NDRF has joined rescue efforts to save the lives of three workers trapped for more than 36 hours in a 300 feet deep stone quarry while six were trapped after boulders had rolled down on Saturday night the fire and rescue teams rescued two people but one died after the rescue uh, let's go across uh, to Sam Daniel now for more and Sam tell us about the rescue efforts also uh, the person who had the license for the quarry has been arrested That's right Gargi and Priyanshi as we speak now these three workers remain trapped 300 feet deep in that stone quarry over the last 36 hours and this morning the NDRF on the first light have joined hands with the fire and rescue personnel to try and save these three people the challenge authorities say is that hundreds of stones and boulders rolled over from top which led to this accident and these three men are believed to be trapped underneath and that's the big challenge for 
the fire and rescue services people earlier and now for the NDRF. In fact, yesterday a chopper was deployed, but because of these difficulties, there was no breakthrough in that. They hope that with the arrival of the NDRF, they'll be able to reach out to these three workers. So far, three people were rescued, two are alive, they've, 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 they've been saved. One person died at the hospital and now the police have arrested the license holder uh, of this quarry and uh, there are allegations that although the mines department had given license to, to quarry to up to 100 feet depth, they had violated that. That's the investigation all about and the people who are practically owning this quarry, they are at large at the moment. And uh, on one side, the investigation is going on. Chief Minister M.K. Stalin has condoled the loss of life and has announced the relief of one lakh rupees for those who suffered injuries. Gargi and Priyanshi. All right, Sam, thanks so much for joining us uh, with the latest there. Let's move on to politics. And Arvind Kejriwal's Amadvi party is trying to gain a foothold in Kerala with an alliance with a tiny party backed by a corporate group. The 2020 party uh, is the CSR wing of Ernakulam-based Anarchitex group of companies. So, I am very happy that the Aam Admi Party and the 2020 party is going to be going to be in Kerala. The party is going to be in Kerala. Now, we all have to meet in Kerala. First, we have to meet in Delhi. फिर पंजाब के लोगों ने माका दिया अब केरला बदलना है कि नहीं बदलना And moving on, a delegation of leaders from BJP, Jammu and Kashmir met Lieutenant Governor Manoj Sinha in Srinagar on Sunday regarding the security of Kashmiri pundits and people from the minority communities in the valley. Meanwhile, another civilian was killed during crossfire as security forces conducted search operations in Shopia, leading to protests in the area. Nazir Masoodi reports. Political leaders from Gupkar Alliance to BJP meet Jammu and Kashmir Lieutenant Governor over security concerns of Kashmiri pundits. As the protests continue against the killing of Rahul Bhatt, who was shot dead inside his office on Thursday, the leaders of Gupkar Alliance led by Farooq Abdullah demanded safety of Kashmiri pundits. The government has constituted a special investigation team headed by a DIG to probe the killing of Rahul Bhatt and also use of force by police during protests by Kashmiri pundits. <laughs> एक भय और आतंक का वातावरण पैदा करने की कोशिश की गई है और हमने एक एसआईटी का गठन किया है इस मामले में वहां के सचिव को अटैच कर दिया गया है एसआईटी सारे तथ्यों की जांच करेगी After Thursday's targeted attack on Rahul Bhatt over 4000 pundit employees who had returned to the valley as part of prime minister's employee package for migrant pundits are demanding their postings at safe places in Jammu as people mourn the killing of Rahul Bhatt, in Shopian, protests erupted after a shopkeeper was killed during search operation by the security forces. Police say 22-year-old Shweb Ahmed Ganai was killed in crossfiring when security forces were chasing a suspect. The locals blame security forces for the killing. <laughs> The Jammu and Kashmir police chief Dilbag Singh termed the killing as a sad incident. This is the second crossfire killing of an innocent civilian in Shopian in the last six days. On Tuesday, Shahid Ghani Dar, a BA first year student was killed and another civilian was injured during an encounter between security forces and terrorists. As the killing of Rahul Bhatt has raised the larger question about the safety of Kashmiri pundits in the valley, the way killings of local Muslims are going on is only adding to a sense of insecurity and also reflects a sorry state of law and order in JNK. In Srinagar, Nazir Masoodi, Findy TV. In other news, Adani is now India's second largest cement manufacturer. That's right, Gargi. Asia's richest man, Gautam, Gautam Adani Group, on Sunday 
said it has clinched a deal to acquire a controlling stake in Holson Limited's business in India for 10.5 billion US dollars, making the ports to energy conglomerates entry into the cement sector. Adani has in the last couple of years diversified beyond the core business of operating ports, power plants and coal mines into airports, data centers and clean energy and now into cement. And from Ukraine now to Sri Lanka. In Sri Lanka, Ranil Vikram Singhe has been sworn in as the new Prime Minister with a formidable task ahead to bring the country back from a brink. But now a look at China's role, Gargi. That's right. China's hand in this Sri Lankan crisis that plunged Lanka's foreign reserves to a new low. Many in Sri Lanka, in fact, believe the loans offered by Chinese investors got them trapped in debt. NDTV's Shrija with this special report. Sri Lanka is in the grip of its worst economic crisis since independence from the British in 1948. There will be some cash transfers. After the governor of the central bank had revealed earlier this week that the country's economy was on the brink of collapse, Mr. Ranil Vikramasinghe was sworn in as the new prime minister. He's seen as a market reformist and is known for maintaining great relations with countries and multinational corporations, raising hopes for a bailout. But one cannot ignore China's role in this crisis that plunged Lanka's foreign reserves to a new low. Political analysts, researchers, professors at well-known universities say that this was largely because of the loans offered by the Chinese investors that got them trapped in a debt. The way China approached Sri Lanka in the post uh, war scenario is also because of Sri Lanka's uh, uh, the, the, the Sri Lanka's necessities actually. That is where China had certain space um, to do more in Sri Lanka. Sri Lanka is geostrategically important because of its crucial sea links and maritime hubs. And the Rajpaksas used this to their advantage in a bid to make profits by deploying a power play between China and India. Sri Lanka, Sri Lankan governments and the people in a way were happy with the way that Chinese uh, aid came and uh, Chinese loans were granted to Sri Lanka without conditions etc. But, but the way I think the regime handled those uh, loans and the way whether they, uh, they, whether they certainly invest them that that's actually that that's a question that people are raising right now where where are those money actually this is the colombo port city this particular project was launched in the year 2014 by mahinda rakshpaksha as well as uh, chinese president xi jinping in fact this project comes under the belt and road initiative for nearly 1.4 us dollars the rajpaksha has clearly compromised india's uh, internal security by allowing china to set a colony right here on the indian ocean the colombo port city is a work in progress by the china harbor engineering there are cranes and infrastructural equipment erected in 2016 this project was halted by ranil vikramasinghe when he was the prime minister and it was revived after Gotabaya Rajpaksha became the president. After the port city Colombo, the second largest port in Sri Lanka is the $1 billion project called Hambantota Port, about 250 kilometers from Colombo. It is a major shipping route with more than 10,000 ships passing by. In 2017, Sri Lanka handed over 70% of the stake to China merchant ports and leased the port for 99 years after it couldn't repay its debts. After much rejection and negotiations, Sri Lanka formalized the West Container Terminal deal in the port city Colombo with India in 2021. There is also a recent agreement signed with the Adani Group to set up two large renewable energy projects at a cost of $500 million. These deals are testimony to the fact that India still has some hold in Sri Lanka. China's presence in Port City, Colombo and Hambantota has raised security concerns for India, the neighboring country, which has maintained multilateral relations with Sri Lanka. In fact, over the last one decade or so, we have seen the economic engagement by China with Sri Lanka only grow more stronger, also pushing this entire country of nearly 
22 million people to deep economic distress. And what's more important also to note here is Mahinda Rajpaksha's governments, especially the ill-conceived government policies, including the fertilizer ban and also the dwindling tourists after Easter attacks and also due to COVID. In Colombo, with camera person Govind Murthy, Shrita for NDTV.